Okay, back to the bugs ring episode 18, skull compositing part 3. Problem solving time! I hate it. Ooh, be quiet. I did the breakout and brought it back in with the loader and hooked it into the wireless node. Now let's go back to the last node. In the last episode, I showed you that we have this problem with the cross colors on the ring. I think it was better visible at frame 210. So let's see if we can fix this. Hey Vito, just get more rum and it will fix by itself. <laughs> now usually when we have problems like this, we use the pinpoint approach, where we go back node by node until we find a suspicious node. Now I assume that the problem I have here comes with the Cook Torrance shader. The Cook, it is always the Cook. Although the Cook Torrance shader gives very nice highlights, it can cause some big time problems like super black pixels, super bright pixels and false pixels where pixels completely disappear. I was thinking that you might not have the very exact result as I do, uh, that is why it's really difficult now to tell you what to do. But if you do have these crushed colors, I can give you a hint on where you might want to try tweaking things. In my case here it is the Cook Torrance material itself and the color corrector here. You can see that it crushes the colors way too much. Now this worked before, but then I adjusted the Cook Torrance, which in return gave me this mess here. If I turn off the color corrector, you can see that the back colors are almost not visible anymore. Yet the material specularity seems still to be way too strong. But okay, let's see. Now I will leave this color corrector off and we'll jump right to the Cook Torrance material. I'm not telling you, it is always the Cook. Shut up over there. Uh, let me view it. And yeah, the golden highlights are way too strong. Now before we tweak something here though, we need to actually hook back in our renderer because we are currently using the breakout. Well, at least I am. <laughs> so let's go to the Skull Gold renderer and rewire this. And we re and rewire and we rewire and we and rewire this and re rewire re rewire re re can't say it. Shiver my timbers. Who makes up those words? Was it you, German? Now I move back to the Cook Torrens and let's see what happens if I reduce the specularity. Let's say 0.5. That could be a better choice. But let's see how the render looks. The render itself looks fine. If I bring this back to 1, we get a value of over 3. Usually that should be no problem, however, as I mentioned before, the Cook Torrens is a very sensitive material when using strong highlights. So you know what, let's go the middle way, perhaps 0.8. And you know what, let's jump forward and do the pinpoint action again. Yes, this is going to be a lot of jumping back and forth action in this episode, but it's also necessary. So let's see where we get some other issues. So sometimes while trying to pinpoint a problem, I discover new things, be it new problems or all of a sudden you get this intuition where you find better settings for a certain node. It's like with a girl, you know, where you're traveling to Tibet and trying, trying to find, find enlightenment. And on your journey, you encounter this mysterious girl. And of course you take a room. You don't let her stand there. Yeah, it's raining. So, for example, just now I thought that this place is a little too strong. So let's uh, reduce this while we're here already. So I set the X refraction to 0 0.01 and and why not? The same for the Y refraction. And to make the displays a little smoother, you could always adjust the spread a little bit. Now, nah, well, not too much, you know. I mean, you don't want to lose the details. I'll leave it off, though. Yeah. Okay, and let's continue with the pinpoint action.
Now this color curve is crushing the colors for some reason. Now I tried fiddling around with it, but could not really get a good result. Well, you made this two years ago. When was that? 2015. Yeah. And not being able to grab the points didn't make it more fun. Now our ship has more swag. So if you encounter this point grabbing problem, just use the curves on the right. Now this gets a little confusing, especially if your result looks different. But let me try to explain what I'm doing next. I'm using a color curve with extreme settings to sort of display bad colors. This is a trick that is also used in audio engineering or mixing when you would crank up the frequency extremely steep and high to locate bad or unpleasant frequencies. You see that the bad colors reveal themselves. You can also use the simple gamma trick where you crank up the gamma very high and see if some areas become more saturated than others. If the image is well balanced, it should be somewhat well balanced when cranking up the gamma. An update here, since Fusion 9, you can do this gamma trick using the control at the bottom of the viewer. So after trying this out here, I came to the conclusion to go back to the Cook Torrents and change the specular settings. But don't bother copying these values now, as I'm gonna change it again in a minute. Simply lean back, drink your espresso and watch how I approach this. I wake up. I wake up. Show some respect. Then I go back again to the color corrector and I reset the settings again. And what I do now is I bring down the gain in the highs master section of the color corrector. Now it's not visible here because I'm using a different layout, but yeah. Then I thought maybe I can bring down the gain in the red channel, but that didn't work too well. So I simply reduce the saturation in the highs to 0.5. So back at the Cook Torrents, I will adjust the specular settings again. And now you will see what I mean with the super bright pixels. You see that bad boy up there? He's not paying rent, so we have to kick him out. But let's give him some thinking time. Meanwhile, let's go back to the color corrector and check the situation. So it looks much better now, although I wish I would not have to clamp the highs so much. Ah, there's our fella again. So in order to kick that fella out here, we can use a color curve. You simply go to the spline editor, you uncheck the alpha channel, though you don't want to mess with the alpha, and then simply bring down the highs. Now it doesn't have to be like a, a very hard clamp like 1.0 you just enough to clip the super bright fella out there Eey. okay now let's tighten it up a little bit here and now i turn back on this color corrector Luckily, this gives some punch to the previously clamped highs. Now, it's looking pretty good now. And now it won't be this bright throughout the whole animation. I guess this would look terrible. Hi, Captain. Can, Can we, we see, see some, some other frames? frames? Uh, sure.
But let's see for yourself. Let's make a quick preview here. Okay, this looks very nice. However, I can still see some pink in there and some anti-aliasing problems. There. So, let's bring this further. Okay, to fix those last things, I go to frame 180. So before we do any changes, it is always a good idea to examine different states in your flow, just to get an overall picture. Yar, what's in that there grog anyways? Ah, grog, a secret mixture that contains one the more of the following. Kerosene, propylene, glycol, artificial sweetness. And perhaps I go back to the cooked horns and this time I desaturate the specular color. This will help with the bad colors. Now, as I mentioned before, I was foolish enough to improvise during recording and I was going for a more goldish look, you know, because pirates love gold. But then I realized it was a mistake and I have learned my lessons. Yeah, I know. You can throw tomatoes at me. <laughs> Are you son of a biscuit eater? Arr. Now let me set this to 0 0.4. And okay, I call these settings now final. You can go ahead and copy them. If they work for you, if not, you know what to adjust. Let's also check another frame. And another one. Yeah, not too shabby. Okay, now let's take care of the anti-aliasing. Go to frame 160. Again, pinpoint action. Now usually you get those anti-aliasing or edge problems when using the ambient occlusion or when mixing software renderer with an OpenGL renderer due to the different filter settings. But let's take a closer look at our passes. The outer edges are still divided, that's why they look like this. But the edge here inside the ring is bad due to something else. So I would check the gold pass first and it looks good. Next the reflect out. Notice how the edges of the highlights burn out and cause bad anti-aliasing. This however is no problem as I reduce the brightness which will recover the good values. So this pass cannot be the reason for our bad edges. What about a lighting out pass? This one looks also good, however, as soon as I multiply the ambient occlusion over, the problem appears. So definitely this is our bad boy here. As I mentioned earlier, the lighting passes were rendered using a software renderer. The software renderer does not have super sampling settings, so we cannot change anything there. This can also cause edge problems sometimes. But now you might ask, the lighting pass? Why the lighting pass? I thought it was that bloody ambient occlusion. Yes, but do you remember that we constructed our ambient occlusion using a lighting pass? Oh, yes, indeed. Let me show you. This is the skull occlusion. And this is the shadow bottom out. Now created with a light shining from the bottom, to then invert it and make it look like a shadow pass. And because the light creates a subtle fall off around the edges, when doing the inversion, the edge appears to be more inwards. Now multiplying them together will cut away a little bit of the edge. In our case, we can simply fix this using an erode dilate. So hook it in after the skull shadow bottom and I will view the multiplied result so we can tweak this and judge at the same time. So be careful, erode this ever so slightly. You see my value is minus 0 0.00033 and if you compare now without the erode and with, bang, edge fixed. 
This could work, but always make sure you are not destroying other areas. This is really a case by case operation. Sometimes you will need masking to avoid affecting other parts of the image. In our case, most areas are in the shadows, so we can get away without having to mask things or do more complex operations. Let me just increase this a little bit more, uh, maybe minus uh, 0 0.0041. Okay, and now let's compare with the final result. I will turn on and off the ambient occlusion and... Shiver in my timbers! It didn't fix the problem! Uh, yeah, it didn't fix the problem completely, but let's continue with the pinpoint action. Okay, so there is still a hint of a darkish outline here. So let me increase the erode dilate minus 0.00048. Uh, now if we compare this, it definitely looks way better. So let us continue. You're right, mate. Have you seen any contraband around these parts? No, but a vast! I have my own! Here are my wares! Best seaweed in the seven seas! Now that's some fine booty. Yeah! Me ye trying to horsewaggle me! I'm out you walk me back! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get him out of here! By the end of your cutlass! So finally, the problem is this brightness contrast here. It is adding contrast, making this highlight burn out. However, I thought watching this at 100%, it is not noticeable at all. Also consider that I'm not using motion blur, which would blur those edges slightly, like this, or maybe not. Now I always advise to my students to work in double resolution of your final resolution. So if your final res is full HD for example, then you work in 3K. That way those little anti-aliasing problems will disappear by themselves when resizing it down to your final resolution. But that would mean you would have to render your tech passes in an even higher resolution, perhaps 5K. And I know that some people out there do not have a very powerful machine at home, so I decided to go with this resolution. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this very jumpy episode involving a lot of problem solving time. Uh, but as I said, I was gonna re-record the whole episode until I felt showing this kind of problems is also very important. So with that said, I'll see you soon in the next episode. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Hey, hey waitress! Bring the rum already, will ya?